So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about performance. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our tre treasuring our past and what our future is like. And I want to let you know that <coughs> I'm always changing my speech. I'm a, I'm a person that just kind of moves with, I'm like a ziggly line. I can't stand still and I can't stay on the same subject all the time. So I never know what I'm going to say exactly until I'm up here and I have notes and then sometimes I throw them away. And then I was looking and looking and looking, couldn't get out of my mind your title of your conference. The title of Treasuring the Past, Transforming the Future. When I normally tell our story about what has happened in our healthcare system, I look at the past and I don't think positively about the past. And so what it did for me, the title that you have, made me start thinking, hmm, if I was to say I'm gonna treasure the past, what does that mean for me? Instead of saying the terrible things that we had to look at and change, what is it that I would treasure if I looked at the past? And how would I think about that? And so um, in treasuring my past, um, I thought about it and I said, hmm, um, if I looked at the things that we did and how we went along our, our um, past and what, did, what would I have treasured about it? I think I would treasure the lifelong relationships that I built with people along the way. So you heard that I've worked for South Central Foundation for 25 years, starting at a receptionist level. So during those 25 years, believe me, I've built relationship and built relationship with governance, with um, the vice presidents that have been working with me. Most of them are still there and with the coworkers that I've walked along with in this journey of wellness. And then I treasure um, big time the changes that I've seen in the ownership of our customer owners. What do I mean by that? I treasure watching people come into a healthcare system um, of a government operated organization, not having say or voice to a place where our children's children are standing up saying, you know what I am? I am a customer owner of my own health care system. I own this building. I have a piece of this rock. I have say, and I can change it. That's huge. I treasure that, watching that transition. I treasure the learning curve that we had. Um, we all had a learning curve and challenges along the way. And I think about them, and some of them were a lot of fun. Some of them were not so fun. Some of them were challenging. But a lot of what we did was a lot of fun while we got to go along and do that. And I treasure every single win we've had. I treasure the excitement we had along with it. Um, when we went to Baldridge Quest to get our award, it was a blast. We went there, had so much fun. It was an easy thing to do. We got told, hey, you got to present. And everybody was so excited about that. And when we got recognized in the audience, um, the person who recognized us, hi, you're out there, said, got up and said, you know, and then there's this group from came from very, very far away. And I'm sure they didn't bring very many people. And 60 people from South Center Foundation jumped up, <laughs> and banging on drums. Ooh! <laughs> I got in trouble for that. I went back to my board set. Somebody complained through me to the hotline because remember we could blow, we could blow hot whistle. We could tell on each other. If we're not doing something right and looks wrong, tell on us. And we encouraged that and so somebody blew a whistle and said, this was the whistle. Went to my board and they said, you brought 60 people back there? I said, yes. And they said, next time ask. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll do that. Next time I'll ask. So what is it about us? What is it about South Central Foundation? We have a target audience. Our target population is about 60,000 people. And they all are Alaska Native American Indian people. We've opened the door recently in the last year to include our employees. So now we have employees that are of mixed culture. But our target population is Alaska Native American Indians. And some people go around and say, wow, you have free health care. It's through trust and treaty agreements that we've received these funds to operate and manage our healthcare system. And we only receive about 
less than a half of the amount of money that is supposed to be, have supposed to been allocated through resources from the federal government. So we have that kind of funding, and then we bill Medicaid and Medicare private insurance very aggressively, and then we go after foundation and funds. And I always love it, going after the foundation and funds. I always go, if you want to save the natives, <laughs> give me the money. <laughs> and it's really easy to do that. So, and they do it. They give us the money. And I'm very happy to say that. So that makes up um, our over $200 million operation. We do a lot of, um, we take out loans, we shake the tree, we go to USDA. If you haven't hit USDA yet, go, go do that. They have lots of money. And, um, and they're out there giving grants and funds, and um, they loaned us funds to build out our Matsu Valley Clinic. So if you look at our campus right now, this is a hospital. It's jointly owned and managed by another. We have a consortium of tribes that runs the inpatient side, and we run all the outpatient. And, so, and then as far as I can see out in the horizon, there's another community where we built another small clinic. And then we have two other clinics that are outside of the Anchorage Bowl that are in small villages that serve six to seven villages in each area, one in Iliamna and one in McGrath. And so the Iliamna one is across the mountains over some ocean, and the McGrath one is up north, and uh, you fly an airplane to go there. In Alaska, we have one road system, north and south. Everywhere else that you go and reach is by boat or airplane. And we have 232 uh, villages and also 232 federally recognized tribes. So if you're getting healthcare services and you're delivering a baby like you were delivering me in Old Harbor, you could still run into the same place where you're being delivered by a midwife because maybe weather would close down, there's not a doctor there, but what we do have now is community health aides and community health representatives that we put through training. They're like little baby doctors. They're not trained, to, they're trained to deliver a baby, but that's not what their primary job is, is to take care of small things and send them into the hospitals. But sometimes weather closes in, and if your access, your only access is by boat or airplane, you're going to be doing some things that you would catch yourself wondering what that's all about. We could do a series on that one. Community health reps and what they do. So that's our healthcare system. We used to live in a federally owned um, government building it was pretty run down, um, had a lot of cracks in the wall, no paints. There was not good incentive to change things because the government was the government. And in order to um, get any funds, they had to shake the tree. And when they build third-party revenues, Medicaid, Medicare, private insurance, all their money went right back into Treasury. We get to keep ours. And so people were frustrated. Everybody was frustrated. Our access into health care was the emergency room. All of us went there for broken arms, for a strep throat, for whatever it was, whatever you wanted to show up for a healthcare system, that was your access. And so when we began to move, we changed the infrastructure of our world, and all of us had to be on board to do this change. That's the fun part. We all had to be on board to do something together. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit of that story. So a little bit of a, that story was the first thing that we had to do was take the current vision and mission statement that we had and blow it up and make it a vision and mission statement that everybody could see and hear and feel and know and want. Our governance, our customer owners, everyone had to know where we were going and why we were going there. And so we created a vision and mission statement with our governance, with our customer owners, and got them in consensus and agreement. And everybody does that, right? Everybody has a mission and vision statement. What do you think, um, how do you think Baldrige helped us in our journey? Oh, by the way, before I get off that track. They helped take us and take everything that I'm going to tell you about, and they helped us tie together t with tools how to have the same language, how to really deploy what we do, how do we connect the dots with our vision, mission, key points, operational principles, and make us move forward to be successful so that everybody from the maintenance person all the way through the organization, all the way up through the governance, through myself, everybody is talking same language and being able to deploy things fast, very, very fast, execute good, innovative, creative, ideas with some boundaries. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit of how to do that, how we did that. And centralizing our data and um, doing methodologies, 
uh, that were together training people, bringing people in. Our analysts are not outside now, they're inside. Um, we learn and then, and then deploy. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we did that. So we are a custom owner. I told you that we were very few. We were very, we grew very, very fast. We had in 1982 a very small um, um, army of employees and then grew like overnight to uh, many custom owners and many employees. And so we were on a shuttle growth and had to get some kind of tool that could help us level out and learn and um, do all those things I just said. So we did, we did create a mission and a vision statement that targeted our population. Our population is Alaska Native American Indians and so we had to have a mission and a vision that people could own. And then, um, so our Number one thing that we do is that we have customer ownership. It's customer owned and it's customer driven. And it's also built on relationships. Many people say they have a patient centered operation. And I think it's, we are just a little bit more than just a patient centered operation. It is actually taking your patient, making them a customer, put them in the driver's seat and let them drive where you're going and what you're going to do. Give to the population what they want. Hear what they have to say and then go forward and do it. We went through an entire organizational change. If you imagine this, um, the VA has been visiting us a lot lately. Have they been visiting you too? They should be. They're running around the country trying to figure out how to change their hospital system. They are concerned because when Obamacare kicks in, they know people are gonna have choice. Either their hospitals are gonna stay open or they're gonna close. And one of the things that they're thinking is how are they gonna change their government-operated system? Well, we did. We had a government-operated system, and we changed that, and we made it into a customer-owned and a customer-driven system built on relationships. We were able to do that. And if you think about it, you think, well, hmm, you're gonna take over a government operated system, you have a whole bunch of employees, what are you gonna do with them? Some of our regional health corporations who were able to enact the law, that means assume the government's role for operation managing healthcare system, took all their employees and let them go and started over again. And we sat down with those government employees and said, what's the thing you're worst scared of? What's the most you're scared of if you're looking at us coming to assume the role of management in our healthcare system? They said, you're gonna fire me. <laughs> That's a good thing to be worried about, don't you think? And we said, well, what about if we say we're not going to? What if we say we want you to move with us to change everything we don't like? We you don't like, all of us, get together and figure it out and change it together. And 98% of those employees stayed. We did not fire them, we didn't let them go. They're still working for us today. Maybe five to 10% left. But just think about that. They came in, we involved them, we changed our healthcare system to what it is today. So what is it today? It wasn't easy. We took on a lot of people, we brought them in, we educated them, we had steady, consistent leader leadership. Our governance doesn't change very much. Our leadership at the vice president, myself, I've been there 25 years, as I said, and the VPs have been staying, have been there also 18 to 20 years. So steady, consistent leadership, steady message, steady mission and vision statement. So. How else did we do it? You know, um, when somebody leaves an organization, isn't it fun? If, you, if somebody leaves, a CEO leaves, or a high-level position, after they go, everything that's wrong, you can blame it on them. <laughs> or not. <laughs> and you know, sometimes um, in a system, it's like, wow, it's so easy. I'm a CEO, and I have seven vice presidents. Something goes wrong if I go before my governance, I can say, it's Doug's fault. <laughs> Come in, Doug, tell him what you did wrong. Well, in our system change and culture, we changed that. We said, no, let's not look at 
an individual and say, that person is to blame or that person is to blame. Let's say what's happening with the system. What's wrong with what we've done? How come it's not working? And let's do a system change to help that, help that person to drive the change. So it's a system change because we're all together on the same point. We have key points. We have a mission and vision statement. We are dwelling on the key essential elements of our organization and what our customer owners want. So one of the things that we have as a key point or a value is um, shared responsibility. And what does that look like? It's not just about customer owner interactions with providers, but it's shared responsibility for every single employee, all of us getting together to achieve the vision and mission statement. So we picked that up from Disneyland, oh, by the way. How many of you, have you want a reason to go to Disneyland? Go see what they do with their vision and mission and key points. Um, our governor sent us there many, many years ago and said, whatever it is that makes employees happy at Disneyland, come back and do it. And the lesson that we learned from them was they don't have a vision and mission statement, a key point that just hangs on a wall. They actually take it down and make it work. And they use key points so people could remember. They use acronyms, so like SCF, shared responsibility, commitment to quality, family wellness. What does that look like? And it isn't just acronym or a statement. It's something you deploy and use within your organization. So what is shared responsibility? It means every individual interacting to achieve the goals, the goals and the vision of the organization. We're all walking, talking, say, saying the same thing. So it's a shared responsibility, not just of our providers with the customer owner. It's my responsibility as an owner, but it's also my responsibility as a customer owner to get well, to achieve that vision, to achieve wellness in my life. So we're all tying together saying shared responsibility is all, all of our interaction. It's something that we all have to do together. So we took key points, we took vision and mission, we took our operational principles, we said that we have to tie these things together, and then we deployed them throughout the entire organization so people could hear and listen and understand. And we went from a system that was just delivering health care, plopping us in, bringing us out, all being a case, just a number, not a person, not knowing each other by name, changing into relationships, knowing we wanted to know each other, commitment to quality, very high quality employees, changing what they're doing, driving their system. And it sounds real easy. How many of you are providers in this room? Direct providers. How many of you are CEOs? And leadership level. So I'm going to just say something that if when we began to drive the system that we had to get together, everybody thought, well, we're in a hospital system, it's all about providers. And it couldn't be, it had to be about customer owners, it had to be about everybody working together to achieve the wellness, to change the system, to make it different. And so we came from this place of where no one was involved to everybody being integrated, everybody knowing what we wanted to achieve for vision and mission. And we achieved that change, not just only by people being able to reach the goals and objectives, but, I'll come back to that, but by really achieving successes within our hospital, all together. People come from all over the world, and this is why they come. We have driven down 75 de decrease 75% decrease in hospital admissions since 1999. And 71% decrease in hospital days per 1,000 since 1999. We had a 36% decrease in outpatient visits per 1,000 customer owners. We have clinical quality, level three, NCQA patient-centered medical home. We have 75 or 90% for HEDIS outcome measures in diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease. Our customer satisfaction rates over 10 years and above 10 years is overall 93%, and employee satisfaction the same. We have employee turnover rate at 
8%. And we're a Baldridge National Quality Award winner. You can go to everybody, all of our 15 to 1600 staff, and ask them how they're achieving the mission. And it's tied directly, linked into their personal evaluation, how it weaves up into the operational principles, into the key points, into the vision and mission statement. We, we allocate resources and money based on that vision, based on that mission. And I wanted to share with you right now a little bit of what we have achieved. South Central Foundation is an Alaska Native nonprofit healthcare organization established in 1982 by Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, or CIRI. South Central Foundation provides a wide range of health and wellness services to Alaska Native and American Indian people called customer owners living in South Central Alaska. South Central Foundation is world renowned for its NUCA system of care, a unique healthcare system designed and managed by customer owners and based on healthy relationships and holistic and multi dimensional care. Customer owners are from culturally diverse tribes from across Alaska. Welcome to the NUCA system of care. The Anchorage Native Primary Care Center is a 175,000 square foot facility located on the Alaska Native Medical Center campus in Anchorage, Alaska. It houses outpatient clinics such as primary care, pediatrics, OBGYN, behavioral health, internal medicine, complementary medicine, traditional healing, pharmacy, lab, radiology, and a small administrative office. The award-winning building design was built based on feedback received from customer owners, making it a uniquely Alaska Native place that builds on the cultures and traditions of the people who come here. The main lobby area is designed as a gathering space. The features of the space include a mix of both modern and traditional elements. Textures and colors throughout the space are reminiscent of places from across the state of Alaska. In this area, customer owners have access to the internet and the Coho Cup Cafe, where visitors can get a coffee or healthy snack. The space is staffed with customer service representatives to assist people in finding their way or other questions they may have. Customer owners choose their primary care provider team or integrated care team called ICTs and come for office visits to one of the several primary care clinics. The lobby areas are meant to be welcoming and comfortable and have useful health information that is kept current by health education staff members. There are also PEPs, or passive education panels, that run health and wellness related information in a video format that customer owners view while they are in the lobby area. During this typical office visit, the customer owner arrives for her baby's well child check at the clinic of the primary care provider she chose. She checks in at the front desk and updates important information in the electronic health record with the administrative staff. She is then greeted by the CMA on her integrated care team. Since the NUCA system of care is a relationship-based system, the customer owner knows all of the members of her team. The CMA leads the customer owner to the room and completes screening and vital information before the primary care provider comes in. Customer owners are seen in both traditional exam rooms and in talking rooms when appropriate. The primary care provider visits with the customer owner and family to examine the child, talk with the family about how they are doing, and inquire about any concerns they are having. As a way to offer a thorough development assessment, the provider invites a behavioral health consultant in to connect with the mom and the baby to determine how the child is doing with regard to developmental stages and notify the mom of what to expect for baby's next milestones. 
The primary care provider also incorporates a registered dietitian into the well child check to discuss infant feeding patterns and anticipatory guidance regarding beginning solid food. They also work with mom to review the growth chart and how baby's measurements are doing. To accommodate the continuous communication between the integrated care team members, they have an open and shared office space to facilitate relationship building between staff members. The primary care provider sits next to the RN case manager and the case management support staff is behind the case manager for easy handoffs and improved communication. The behavioral health consultant and registered dietitian sit across from the primary care provider and case manager and are closest to the door for easy access into the clinic space. Talking rooms are slightly smaller, less clinical looking spaces where the ICT members can visit with customer owners in a more partnering and respectful setting. The curved desk space provides the staff and customer with an equal level to connect on and has high windows to allow natural light to flow in. These rooms can accommodate any visit that does not require an exam table and are often used for customer conversations, staff interactions, and telemedicine video visits. The pediatric department provides statewide support and consultation with an array of specialists and subspecialists coordinating care across Alaska. The department is similar to the primary care clinic with integrated care teams, shared office space for the ICT, talking rooms, and exam rooms. Lobby areas are also similar with health and wellness information and passive education panel screens for informational videos. Complementary medicine is a short walk down the hall from pediatrics and has a similar lobby space. Complementary medicine offers chiropractic, massage therapy, and acupuncture services. Customer owners are referred by their primary care provider to be seen in complementary medicine. On the first floor of the primary care center, customer owners can pick up their prescriptions immediately following their ICT visit. Pharmacists, pharmacy techs, and administrative support personnel staff the full-service pharmacy. In addition to the traditional pharmacy location, some pharmacists are members of the integrated care team in primary care. This way, the customer owners can talk with the pharmacists on their team if they have any questions about their medication and can receive prescriptions as they are leaving their visit, avoiding another stop to pick up medication. Just down the hall from the pharmacy is one of the two campus behavioral health departments where customer owners have options of group or one-on-one -on -one settings for their care. In this shared lobby space, customer owners have access to the OBGYN and radiology departments. The entrance to the lab is also in this area, however, all labs are drawn in the department where the customer owner is seen and then sent to the lab through a pneumatic tube system. Lab results are typically provided to the customer owners by their integrated care team's case manager in a phone call. OBGYN physicians and certified nurse midwives see customers in the OBGYN department for a wide range of specialty women's health issues. Many pregnant customer owners are seen in their primary care integrated care teams by certified nurse midwives and some are seen in OBGYN for complexity or by customer owner choice. There are many unique features of the Anchorage Native Primary Care Center including the Alaska Native art that is found throughout the building. In the newest section of the building, there is a special light feature that is visible during the summer and winter solstice, a very important time in Alaska. Light is caught high above the third floor of the building and directed with mirrors down a column that is visible on all floors in the center of the building. The Alaska Native Primary Care Center is truly a unique design based on the many cultures and values of the Alaska Native people. So that's a picture of what we have today. And I'm gonna wrap up by um, telling you just about our operational principles. Our operational principles was based on our values, the values of our community. And some people think, well, you know, how can you adapt what we have done in Alaska to other areas, especially if we have a target population, and how does it relate to other organizations? Care Oregon came up and they visited us and took what we had and adapted it to what they already had going for them, and within two years, proved that they could save over $2.8 million in their healthcare system. They also went back to their senators and got some funds, and were able to allocate those funds to Care Oregon to do PDSAs, to check people out, to see if their primary care clinics could do the same kind of replication that we did in integrated care. So what is our operational principles, and how does it tie to what we do. Everything that comes before us for allocation of resources, for funding, or budget, um, or human resources has to go and meet these principles. 
One of them, it's all spelled around relationships. And so I've already talked about relationship between the customer, owner, family, and provider. So I won't go into more of that. But I'll talk about emphasis on wellness of the whole entire family and the community, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual wellness. We look at the person as a whole, not one part of them, not just that they're a person just has a human body, but SCF acknowledges that this is looking at the whole entire being, both the spiritual and the mental, as well as the physical body. We look at locations that are convenient. You saw that we have a campus. We did try t taking these services and putting them off campus and found that it's better to put everything in one place. So um, we looked at having clinics that were off-site, women's clinic or a small clinic here and there. It works better if everything's located on one um, area for minimal stops, easy access. We did have access optimized and minimized so that I can today call up my provider and get in same day access. Um, we have redesigned our primary care system so every customer owner who has an impaneled um, population can, their um, customer owners can get in and same, see their phys physician the same day, same access, no waiting times. And no waiting times, minimal waiting times on the phone for when you're trying to get an appointment, when you're trying to speak to someone, we've reduced the waiting time for our customer owners. Together with the customer, customer owner as an active partner, the difference now between our patients who were, had no voice, they were not participating in governance level decisions, are, the change that we have made is that customer owners are sitting at the governance level, they make decisions with us, they're involved in their health care, they, they make decisions with their providers on what's, what their outcomes are going to be today and in the future. We make an intention, whole system design, to maximize coordination and minimize duplication. So if a project or a program comes in the door and we're looking at it, we're going to look and see if it's already being done. And if it is, we're not going to implement it. We're going to tie it into something that's already being um, accomplished. For instance, across the nation came funding for diabetes and control. We took the funding that came allocated from Congress and just placed it into our primary care system instead of creating an isolated diabetes program. We measure everything. If you want measurements, we have outcome and measurements for everything that we do. And nowadays, it's, it's almost impossible to go after grant fundings or new fundings without measurements and outcomes. And our population wants to know if we're doing better or not. We make sure things are not complicated, but simple. And we make sure that services are financially sustainable and viable. So everything that we do, we have to look and see, is it going to be around, and not just around for 20 years, but around for our children's children. So, um, and that's very important to us. The hub of the system is family, just like many of you in your communities, the hub of your system is family, so everything we do is culturally appropriate looking at the hub of the system being the family. And the interests of the customer owners drive the system. They determine what we do, how we do it. We have customer listening posts, we have surveys, we're constantly listening, we hear what they have to say, word of mouth, we have um, active um, advisory committees, they're on our governance, we're listening, we change constantly according to what they say and want and do. We do have a population-based system and services, so we have to pay attention about what we can provide and what we cannot provide. Like many of you, you have to cap it somewhere. And we we make sure our services and systems are built on the strengths of Alaska Native cultures.